Happy New Year. Happy 2023 to you. I am so excited that God has brought us through another year and brought us to a brand new year and has given us an opportunity to right some wrongs, correct some error, change course, and to get things rectified that maybe we left undone throughout 2022. And one of the things that the um, Holy Spirit has really uh, put upon my heart personally, and maybe for you as well, is that 2023, or this new year, should not be necessarily a year that I would make all of these materialistic goals or all of these growth goals, success goals, external goals, but rather I should take this year to really focus on my emotional health, my mental health, my spiritual health. Because if we take care of the inside, the outside will always follow suit with what's going on on the inside. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. His real material world follows what's in his what's happening, you know, within his internal being. And so I know that um, many of us struggle with more people than we realize struggle with not feeling seen. We have housewives, mothers that work their fingers to the bone and don't feel seen by their husbands, by their children. We have husbands and fathers that do everything, really go to impossible lengths to provide for their families, and they feel neglected, they feel taken for granted, they don't feel seen. And so there's a text uh, found in Genesis chapter 16, where it says, I'll, I'll take it up in the middle of the story, in Genesis 16, verses 6 through 13, it says, But Abram said unto Sarah, Behold, thy maid is in thy hand. Do to her as it pleaseth thee. And when Sarah dealt hardly with her, her name was Hagar, she fled from her face. And the angel of the Lord found her by a fountain of water in the wilderness, by the fountain in the way, to Shur. And he said, Hagar, Sarah's maid, whence camest thou? Where are you coming from? And whither wilt thou go? Where are you going? She said, I flee from the face of my mistress, Sarah. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Return to thy mistress and submit thyself under her hands. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly, that it shall not be numbered for multitude. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child, and shalt bear a son, and shalt call his name Ishmael, because the Lord hath heard thy affliction. And he will be a wild man, his hand will be against every man, and every man's hand against him, and he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. And she called the name of the Lord that spake unto her, Thou God seest me. For she said, Have I also here looked after him that seeth me? Now let me give you the context, because we, we cut to the middle of the story. The context is that this is a young woman by the name of Hagar. She is the slave or servant to Abram's wife, Sarah. Sarah was, you know, of older years and could not see herself having children, though God promised children. And so she took her slave and she gave her slave, Hagar, to her husband, Abram, that he might lie with her 
and make a child with her. And, and once the younger slave got pregnant or came into relations or sexual relations with Abram, she resented Sarah. And, you know, when you think about this in a real life, from a real life perspective, um, there are a lot of reasons why she would have felt resentment for Sarah. You know, sometimes we read the Bible like, you know, these people are comic characters. These were real everyday people. You know what I mean? If 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 you were at the behest of someone else and they gave you sexually to their old husband, uh, you know, with you having no no choice in the matter, you think you might feel resentment? Maybe she felt used. You know, maybe maybe Hagar um maybe she didn't want children. You know, um Maybe she didn't want to have sex with an old man like that. Or, or maybe she, in the process of having sexual relations with Abram, maybe she developed feelings for Abram. We don't know what was the engine of her resentment, but we do know that it is the human tendency under those kinds of circumstances to more than likely develop some level of resentment. But whatever the case, she felt unheard. She clearly felt disregarded. She seems to have felt unseen as a human being, as a person, to have been swapped around like mere merchandise. Because everybody, needs to feel seen. Now, to be seen means to be acknowledged. It means to be respected. To be seen means to be valued. It means to be affirmed. Everybody needs this. There's a point in time even in the development of your children, that you have to stop and listen to what your children have to say and not just pull the I'm the parent card and tell them to shut up because everybody needs to feel seen. Everybody needs to feel heard. And here Hagar is, a young slave girl who is not clearly feeling seen or heard. And here she is in this desperate place full of resentment and anger, and God meets her where she is. And God says, you know, hey, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that, and I'm going to take care of you, and you're going to be all right. Go on back there and do whatever she tells you to do because I got your back. And she calls God, she names him, the God, thou God seest me. And the Hebrew interpretation of what she called God is El, El Rohi. You might read it as El Roy <laughs> if you come from Holly Grove, meaning God sees me. It, it means it's also interpreted as the God of sight or the God who saw me. When, when she's at a point where she's feeling completely unseen and completely unheard, the Almighty meets her where she is, and she calls him the God who saw me, the God who sees me. Now, you have to understand that Hagar was an Egyptian girl, so it means that she came from Egypt where she had known many gods. She, she always talked to them, the gods of, of Egypt, but they never talked back. She always saw, you know, images of them, but she never felt like they saw her. But this time, the Almighty was talking to her, and she was, she always, you know, 
again, saw the gods of Egypt, but now watch this, the almighty el Rohi sees her. He's the God that sees you. And I know that there are many of you that are watching this right now and you feel like you're unheard, you're unseen, you, you feel invisible, you feel like the invisible man or the invisible woman. But I come to spare, I come to share rather good news with you. The God who sees all is seeing you. While she was invisible and unseen by the world around her, who pays attention to a slave? She was overseen by the Almighty who sees all. When she felt unseen and unheard, God steps into her world and makes her know that you may feel unseen in the natural but in the supernatural, where it really matters, where it really counts, I see you. Now, that, you know, let's look deeper into what possibly made her feel unseen. Well, number one, I'll offer you three ideas. Number one, she had been abused by those she served. I don't care how you, know, how you cut it. You can talk about cultural or whatever. It's abusive for one woman to take another woman who is subservient to her and to give her as a gift to her husband without that woman's consent. So, so she, she clearly felt abused by others. And I know that there are some of you that are watching this right now. You feel unseen in this world because you've been abused physically, sexually, emotionally, maybe spiritually abused in the church at the hands of some toxic uh, leadership. And you're sitting there in, 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 in the pit of abuse and, and you feel like nobody sees me, nobody hears me, I'm worthless. I'm here to tell you that God sees you. I like the way Romans chapter 12, uh, verses 19 through 21, I like the way the writer puts it. He says, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink, for in so doing thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Here Hagar is sitting in this resentment, sitting in this anger, and the God who saw her meets her. And he says to her, relax yourself. Let your anger, you know, dissipate. Go on back, because I got you. And I know that there are many of you that are watching this now. You're, you're filled with anger because you feel like you're unseen by the very people you've given the most to. You've been abused by people that you thought you could trust. And you feel like nobody sees, nobody understands. But the Almighty says, don't worry about that. Vengeance is mine. You move forward with your life because I see you. And let me take care of those who have abused you, those who have done you wrong. Don't, don't dirty or muddy your hands in vengeance because that's not your job. Vengeance is my responsibility. I will repay because I see you. Oh, they may, they may have you know, seemed like they've gotten by, but it's just a mirage. They've, they've not gotten away. I see you. I see what you've gone through. I see how your heart has been broken. And what I want you to do is know that vengeance is mine. I keep record and you move forward with your life and let me handle these matters because I see you. What made her feel unseen? Not only was she abused, but she was clearly disregarded. I don't read where Sarah consulted with her. Sarah had no regard for her feelings or, you know, for her body, 
for her wishes or for her will. Sarah just offered her up. She was, she was disregarded. I think, you know, being disregarded, people just, you know, looking over you, looking around you, looking past you, no consideration for you. I think that this can make you feel unseen. The Bible says in Luke chapter 20 and verse 17, Jesus looked direct directly at them and asked, then what is the meaning of that which is written? Watch this. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. You may be disregarded by the world, but God has a unique way of taking those who have been disregarded, looked over, ignored, not considered. God has a unique way of taking those which were last and making them first. You see, it doesn't matter that the world disregards you when you are, when you are in the eye of the beloved when you are in the eye of the Almighty, when you are the beloved in the eye of the Almighty, it does not matter that the world disregards you and you feel unseen and unheard by the world because at the end of the day, God raises one up, God pulls another down by his own volition, his own sovereignty. Joseph was disregarded. His brothers really wanted to kill him, but they sold him into slavery. But the will of the Almighty still brought him to a place of prominence. He was not seen by his family, but he was overseen by the Almighty every step of his journey. And I know you're sitting there and you feel like, you know, you're in a family, you're in a, you're in a church, you're in a, a workplace environment where you're disregarded. People, you know, they, they don't seem to recognize you. And it's bothering you. Let not your heart be troubled. Because the Almighty is the one that sees you. You're not going unseen. Not only are you seen, you are overseen by the only one who really matters. Why did, why did Hagar feel unseen? Well, she ultimately would be discarded of. She probably felt it coming. She was, she was abused. She was disregarded. And, and she would ultimately be discarded of like, like trash because as you read the story, you will see where Hagar would have a child, and his name would be called Isaac. And there comes a point in the story. Now, this is the same, this is the same Sarah that used this young girl to make a baby for her and her husband, because she was gonna, you know, claim the child as as her own, just was gonna use this girl's womb. But when, when Sarah had her own kid, now Sarah made up an excuse. She said, well, you know, I'm looking at Hagar and her boy, and, and there's tension there between uh, her boy and, 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 and my son Isaac. And she tells Abram, get rid of the boy. Get rid of Hagar. Put him out. And Abram follows her orders, and he puts them out. And go, Abram first goes to God and says, you know what? God says, yeah, put him out. Because you got to remember, God had already told, he had already told Hagar, I'm going to bless your son. I'm going to bless his seed. And I'm going to make, I'm going to make you, I'm going to bless y'all in ways that's going to blow your mind. So while Abram thought he was throwing her out, he was really just delivering her over into the hands of the Almighty. There are a lot of folk who feel like they are throwing you away. They are really just delivering you into the hands of the blesser. You're not discarded of, because if God be for you, 
then who can be against you? You're not discarded of. God has an ultimate plan for your life when the world thinks that it's throwing you away. God has already made a way of escape for you. Now, how does God make us feel seen since he's the God that sees us? How does God make us feel seen? Number one, or letter A, he draws closer to us when the world pulls away. When the world pulls away, God draws in close. When your family and friends walk out, God walks in closer. When, 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 your, when your love affair is over, God moves in closer. He draws closest to us when the world pulls away. The more isolated we are from the world, the closer God is to us. And if you just stop grieving the loss of whatever you think these people are for a minute and you really pay attention, you feel God's presence now more than you've ever felt it before. Because when the world pulls away, God draws in closer. And I love the way Psalms 34, 18 and 19 puts it. It says, the Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. When the world is pulling away and bruising and breaking your heart, God pulls in close and delivers you out of all of the trauma. That's how God makes us feel seen when we feel unseen. Letter B, he speaks to our hearts directly. If I can get you to stop focusing on who walked out, who left you, and how bad it feels, and you know, all of these kinds of things. And if I can get you to really lock in on God and pay attention, you will discover that God is speaking down in the city of your sanctified soul. You'll hear his voice saying, Peace be still. Relax yourself. Everything's going to be all right. Because when we feel unseen by the world, when we feel unheard by the world, he does for us like he did for Hagar. He draws in close to us and he speaks to our hearts directly. Hagar didn't need a prophet. Because God spoke to her directly. And right now, if you pay attention, God is speaking to you directly. 1 Kings 19, 12 and 13 says, And after the earthquake of fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still small voice. And it was so when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle and, and went out and stood in the entering in of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, what doest thou here, Elijah? Now, when you read the full story here, Elijah was in a place of depression. He was even suicidal. And he was running because Jezebel told him she was going to kill him. And when Elijah slows down and he comes to a place of rest, he hears a still, small voice asking him, what are you doing here, Elijah? And God brought restoration to him. And likewise, if you pay attention right now, you're sitting there and you say, Bishop, I feel unseen. I feel unheard. God is speaking down in your spirit. And then the third thing that we glean even from his dealings with Hagar, how does God make us feel seen when we feel unseen? God draws closest to us when the world is pulled away. He speaks to our hearts directly. And then let us see, he rescues us from our chaos. Here Hagar is in a place of chaos. 
her life has been turned topsy-turvy by no, do, no doing of her own. She's in a place of chaos. And God met her in her place of chaos. And some of you are in a place of chaos. And God is sending a word of rescue to you, even in your chaos. God steps to, to Haggai in a place of chaos, and he says to her, don't worry about this. I'm going to rectify your chaos. And when I'm done, you're going to be made whole and much, much, much better than whole. God rescues us from our chaos. In Psalms number 40, verses 1 through 3, he says, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of an horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my goings. And he hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. God is delivering you out of your chaos. You thought you needed him. You thought you needed her. You thought you needed them. And God is making you understand that all you've ever needed is him. And so though you're sitting there and you may feel unseen, you may feel unheard, I want you to know through 2023, God sees you. God hears you. I want you today, if you're there and you're saying, well, pastor, I'm so glad to know that God sees me. I need to give my heart to the Lord. I want to give my life to the Lord. There's an email address on the screen. If you will email us, the, email us there, someone's going to respond to you and lead you through the scripture and help you to give your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. If you need to join New Home Church, you may also email us there and someone, someone will respond to you and, and help facilitate your becoming a member of New Home Church, be it in the physical sense or even on the cyber platform. Now today on this New Year's, on this New Year's Day, I'm asking every person that is willing and able to sow a $223 first fruit seed on this, this New Year's Day, I love it, Sunday morning. Sunday morning is on a New Year's Day. I want you to get the first fruit seed. What is the principle of the first fruit? You take the first part and God is going to breathe upon the part you bring to him and sanctify to him. He's going to breathe upon the remaining of your seed, your life, your health, your money, whatever it is, throughout 2023. I'm asking you to strive to sow 223, but some are sowing 2023. Even as I'm speaking, there are some that are sowing 2023. As the Lord has blessed you and as your heart is willing, I want you to sow your first fruit seed today. Those of you who have the Lord's tithe, I want you to prepare the Lord's tithe, return the Lord's tithe. But on this first Sunday of 2023, January 1, I want you to get that first fruit seed of 223 or 2023, and I want you to sow it now. Now, I love you. All of the giving apparatuses are on the screen you can utilize them if you're watching by way of a, a platform where it's not on the screen. Screen, Look in the description. It'll be there. Find one of the links. And let's return the Lord's tithe and let's bring the first fruit offering before the Lord today. When I ask you to give, I'm not asking you to give to me. I'm asking you to sow into New Home Church. Always remember that. Now, know that I love you. Happy New Year to you. I want you to continue to tithe, continue to give. You are on top and you're going higher. God has more in store for you. So guess what? We will see you at the top. God bless you and Happy New Year to you.